All right, this leak code question is called find all numbers disappeared in an array. It says given an array of integers, basically from one to n, where n is the size of an array, some elements appear twice and others appear once. Find all of the elements of one to n inclusive that do not appear in this array. Could you do it without extra space and in O of n runtime? You may assume the returned list does not count as extra space. So given this criteria, our solution will be without extra space and in O of n runtime. So the example they give us has eight elements in an array. So you'd expect to see the numbers one through eight, but you don't see the numbers five and six. So that's what our result will be. All right, so in a perfect world, this is what we would have. If we had four elements, the array would have the numbers one, two, three, and four. Does one, two, three, and four look like anything? Well, it kind of looks like the indices of the array. The indices are zero, one, two, and three. So these numbers are pretty much the same, except we would subtract one from them to get the index. So really the way we can look at it is that every element of the array is really just an index. Why do we have to subtract one? Well, if you think about it, let's say we get to the number four and we tried to do something at the fourth index of the array, it would overflow. There is no index four. So you just take every number and you subtract one. So if we start with the number one, what's one minus one? That's zero. That corresponds to this. What about the number four? Subtract one from that and we get the index three. That corresponds to this. Three minus one is two. That corresponds to this. And two minus one is one. That corresponds to this. So every number can be thought of as an index. So let's do a scenario where a number is missing. Let's change this three to a two. All right, so this array should have the numbers one, two, three, and four, but it has the numbers one, two, and four, so it's missing a three. So what we can do is we can somehow match up every element in the array to an index, and whatever index doesn't get matched up is the index that's missing. I'll show you what I mean. What's one minus one? It's zero. So that would be here. What's four minus one? That's three. This is index three. What's two minus one? That's one, which will be here. And what's two minus one again? Still one, so we don't have to do anything because we already filled that one in. So we can tell what number was missing by the index that's not marked. But remember how we subtracted one from the number to get the index? We have to do the opposite if we want to get the number from the index. So this is the index of two, so we add one. So two plus one is three, and that's the missing number from this array. So when we're going this way, we subtract one to get the index. And once we find the missing index, we add one to get the number that was missing. All right, but how does this actually work? Let's do a quick example of that. So how do we mark that we've already been to an index? We'll make the number a negative. So let's begin. We start at the first element. That's the number one. What index does that correspond to? What's one minus one? Zero. So we take whatever is at index zero and we mark it by making it a negative. So this would be negative one. What's the next number? It's the number four. To get the corresponding index, we have to subtract one. Four minus one is three. So we mark the number at the third index by making it negative. The third index is this last number two. So we make it a negative. Now we're at the number two. What's its corresponding index? Two minus one is one. So we make whatever is at the first index negative. So this is negative four. And finally, we're at the last number, which 
it is a negative two, but what we're actually doing is finding the absolute value of that. So what's the absolute value of two? That's two. What's two minus one? That's one, which is the corresponding index. So we make sure the number at index one is negative, and it is because we just did that with the previous number two. So then we're done with that step. So as you can see, we've successfully marked three elements. So what's the missing number? We loop over each element and see if we've marked it. Have we marked this one? Yes. Have we marked this one? Yes. Have we marked this one? No. So what index is that? It's index 0, 1, 2. And to go from the index to the number, we have to add 1. So 2 plus 1 is 3. Now we're at the last number. Is it negative? Yes. So we're done. We know that the only element missing was the number 3. All right, let's get to the code. What LeetCode has given us is a function called find disappeared numbers, which accepts an array called nums. All right, so remember the overall thing we're going to do is we're going to loop over every element in the array and mark every index that corresponds to an element in the array by making it negative one. And then at the end, any index that's not a negative one means that that number is missing. All right, so let's start. We need a for loop to loop over our array. So for let i equal zero, i is less than nums.length, i plus plus. So that would put us here. All right, so now remember we need a reference to the index that's one less than the element we're on. So we'll say let j equal math dot abs. We have to make an absolute value of nums i minus one. So j right now would be two minus one, which is one. And now we have to go to index one and make that a negative number. So nums j equals the absolute value of whatever is at nums j times a negative one. The number at index one is the five, so that'll be negative. I just realized I put the parentheses in the wrong place, so let me fix that. All right, so just to finish off the for loop, the next number is five. What's five minus one? Four. So we go to the element at index four and we make it negative. So this is negative. Move over again. This element is three. Three minus one is two. So we make whatever element is at index two negative. That happens to be the same one we're on. Move over one, we're at one. One minus one is zero, so we make the element at index zero negative. And finally, move over one. Subtract one from the absolute value of this. One minus one is zero, so we make the element at index zero negative, and it's already negative. Okay, so now we need our result array. We'll say let results equal an empty array. So now we're going to loop over this array and see if any element is positive. If it's positive, we'll add one to it to get the index and add that to our result array. So we'll have another for loop for let i equal zero. i is less than nums.length i plus plus. So we check if it's negative. If nums i is positive, meaning we haven't seen it before, then we need to add it to our result array. But remember, we always have to add one to it. So we push i plus one. All right, so let's see how that would work. We'll be back here. 
Is it positive? No. So we move to the next one. Is it positive? No. We move to the next one. Is it positive? No. Let's move to the next one. Is this positive? Yes. At this stage, we're on index 3. So we need to add 1 to 3 in order to get the proper number. 3 plus 1 is 4. So at this stage, let's say this is our result array, we'd push in the number 4. Then we move over one more element. Is this positive? No, it's not. So the number missing is only the number 4. All right, so back to the code on the right. Since we've done all that, all we have left to do is to return the result array. All right, let's run the code, see how we did. Ah, I made the same mistake twice. Parentheses are supposed to be here. Let's try again. All right, accepted. Hit submit. All right, so our solution was faster than about 83% of other JavaScript submissions. As usual, the code and written explanation are linked down below. If you like the video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It helps out a lot. See you next time.